I told you the story about me being schooled by. <laughs> But you know, the thing is, you can turn the air on. We should be yeah. doing you turn the air on, right? That's it. Turn the air on. Maybe put the blinds down oh. a piece. Yeah, you know, well, I can guess I can understand you and Peter and the. Oh, she's got this is the VIP table. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's that corner. No, 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 because Christine's over there. What information like that? I want to get Hello. Exactly. I couldn't get it. Exactly. I couldn't get it. I did. Linda won't be here and Kathy will. Saving a seat for Linda, but she's not coming. Oh, yes, because she's not giving what I can't hear Sometimes I'm a loss and sometimes there's an argument. He won't be here today. I don't mind. We Wait a minute. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? It's not illegal unless somebody takes to it. So we have to be I think that's come out of here. I'm sending it out just so there's a May meeting. A what? May meeting. Will there be one? I think so. About the electronic demo. Do we have it? any copies of the agenda or is the agenda? Oh, agenda is no, no, that's fine. It's up here. But we, they're right here at the sign. If anybody needs an agenda, it's good. I got it on my iPad, but by the chair has got. Chair has to have a map to. Uh, typically, yeah. okay. typically, the meetings would uh, the committee meetings would go all year long, regardless of the election. I think it was June. It, it will be the June one where you reapply if you want to continue. So when you when the new board comes in, then they will. Confirm the committee or add or change whatever in the committee. In the, in the July meeting. Yeah. After, after July, the meeting, the it was the reorientation. Re 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 That's the board's action. Yes. And Kathy Wall is not going to be here either. So it's similar. The board changes every year. Spray. The committees can change every year. I got a more. Yeah. And they're both in Europe in May. The action in July, but maybe. Maybe we, we, just, yeah. we come in the wrong way. It's lost. It's going to France. I'm saying in France to the home. This is being cruise out and about. I invited her to meet me at the uh, Hemingway yeah. Bar at this hotel. Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do. Is it in France? In Paris, yeah. In Paris, yeah. It's at the Ritz Hotel, yeah. I that one CD I have only spent one quick night and then in October last year. I still got a lot of parents. Yeah, Where are you from originally? In Norwegian. I take a look Mexico. Wrote his letter. So, which one did he say? Norwegian, Mexico. Yeah, well, yeah, my point. I look at the closing one. <laughs> you couldn't believe how many times I they come. I see them together for whatever reason. It's like that. Um, so we're in Mexico. In Veracruz. Oh. Veracruz. 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 Yeah, I'm mostly up in Vallarta and Mexico City. Yeah. Oh, well, good. But good. I've never been to the East. And what came up this yeah. time last spring? Yeah. 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 Um, well, I hope you have seen the night nice museum. You called in and they said, if you want to wait and Mexico City, I'd like to go back. I've been to Paris and Paris. So I'm sorry. This is just a shout out. I'm going to check 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 out. I'm going
the website I speak French very little French yeah I'm traveling with a longtime friend who's from Los Angeles and he speaks so so he's he's I tell him he's my translator yeah it's funny I we need to go my husband I I speak French I heard she was actually yeah yeah I can but we need to go back to where we are. And, and then you see, like, we just did in Italy and what you're doing, just to stay there for three whole weeks and just just take your time, go visit. I'm sure I'll have a very good Oh, okay. I guess we're ready to see. Yeah. Uh, what? I don't think it's turned on. Oopsie. No, it's not. We got green lights, but see my my work I'd have trouble giving up with that other ones. Hello, hello. Nope, still not working. Hello, hello, hello. Is it on? Barbara, Beto. Hello. Hello. You're acapella. Hello. Can Hello. you hear me? Working. Not working. No. Can I see one of them? Testing. Nope. Yeah, it was on. Still not working. Because it's on. Yes. Right. That is, this one's working. Hello. Hello. Like yes, yes, yes. It's yes. 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 to song now. Yes. Okay, uh, we're ready to start. Um, it looks like everybody is here, uh, except for Linda Cook, who couldn't make it today. She'd let me know. And Kathy War. Uh, um, Lisa Tafoya texted me just a uh, short a uh, little while back saying she was feeling unwell and most probably will not be coming in. So uh, and I see Don Elwanger is on the on Zoom. Um, I also want to make sure that everybody can hear us on Zoom. Don, uh, can you raise your hand to say that you can hear us and that we don't hear anything at the end of the meeting saying nobody heard us? Hello? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, Betsy, you'll be also uh, checking on chat. I mean, or Zarina. Yeah, and so Zarina is now is today doing the uh, on-job training with us. Um, so um, we just, it, it's gonna take a little while, but uh, I think we can just work through this, Betsy. So uh, let's do the first item on the, uh, oh, we've got also uh, mem uh, homeowners are Barbara Bedo and Peter Pelkofer. Is that any anyone else? Oh no, yeah, I mean on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, on Zoom, I was, yeah, I can see Carol. <laughs> so yes, yes. Okay, and Carol Duke here is okay. Where? Oh gosh, I didn't see you there, Dan. Yeah. Okay, but okay. <laughs> everybody is okay. So Barbara Bedo, Peter Pelkofer. Dan Duraway. Okay. Um, and now we have Carson, both, uh, okay, Oscar and Paul Dubois. All right. Okay. Well, can we just check to see who that is? Uh, uh, they're still connecting, okay. Uh, that's why you want to make sure it's <laughs> it's, it's not uh, yes. So can we uh, ask who White is, please? Uh, yeah, this is Maureen White at fourteen. Oh, yes, lovely. Thank you, Maureen. Just wanted to check on that. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and Lynn. Okay. Lynn Goldsmith. Okay. Okay. Great. Welcome. So. Um, Let's move on to the first item, well, the second item on the agenda, which is to approve the February 2023 minutes. Uh, there were quite a number of you who were absent, so that on the 16th of February, 
So the people who were present, uh, does anyone want to move to uh, approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. Okay, that's uh, Lee. Okay, okay, that's Solveig. And do I get a second for that? Diane. Diane. And the other members who were present are all in favor? So uh, the next item is the liaison report. So I'm going to hand this over to you, Kath, um, Cheryl. All right. Um, probably all of you have already received or heard. If you haven't, Betsy is leaving us, sadly. She's assuming a new position in another facility or another uh, HOA. Her last day will be here. Here will be the 30th of March. So um, there's going to be transition going on. There's going to be changes. I don't see much change for this committee or for most committees. Uh, the board is working with First Service to identify how we recruit and who we recruit and who we interview for the new general manager position. We've um, met with um, Marcus and I. Are all of you familiar with the restrictions on Davis Sterling Act that you can't have the various board members all unless there's a noticed meeting? We want to move this through fairly quickly and get to the point where we can start interviews. We don't want this dragging out. So Marcus and I met with Andy Helms, who's the supervisor that uh, Betsy reports to, and she will be our contact within First Service, setting up uh, interviews looking for candidates. She thinks she's got a couple that she'd like to consider and talk to working for first service. Their commitment is if they cannot find a first service manager to step into this that we find acceptable, then they will go outside first service. The advantage to Nepenthe is that if they hire from within first service, they know the systems. They don't have to learn the accounting system and all the procedures and the rest. So we will be working on that. There's going to be some change, of course. First, we're only going to have two people at most in the front office. We don't have, right now we've got two and a half. Zarina is still part-time. We don't know whether that can be changed, but that's a possibility that we will be talking with First Service about. Um, we will interview and select a general manager that fits Nepenthe. It's not going to be just because we need somebody. We want somebody that really fits and is going to be with us for a while. Uh, we will receive support from First Service during the recruitment period. Did you have a question? Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I don't know her, so if you do, and pass that on to Andy, or okay. Um, the What we will be doing is receiving service from First Service to back us up. So there will be days when we will have people from First Service Management here providing help. They will be the ones who step in and take over some of the duties that Betsy has. What is really important, I think, for during this period of time is that we keep our communications clean and clear. So if there's a problem within this committee, it goes to Christina first. If it's a neighbor or you have a problem with your house or your problem with your property, please put it in writing so that we have a tracker and a record of what's going on and what's needed. We'll continue to do our zone walks and everything as we go along. But if we have fewer people here or people who are here for a few hours and by phone for the other time of the day, things might be a little slower in response. So we want to be able to manage that. And the best way to manage it is to make sure our communication is clean, that we get to the right people first, not later, and that we keep track of what we're being given for and the service requests and the rest. Anything on grounds that you needed to share with? Us? Okay, I just I wanted to just check something then here. Um, from from the from, yes. 
on the uh, liaison update from last month. It, it comes on and off. Yeah, you go. On the uh, liaison update uh, in last month, uh, sorry I wasn't here, but uh, you talked about the priority for committee is to document all landscape deficiencies through 2023 with remediation being done in 2024. Is there, in this sentence, is deficiencies and remediation synonymous? Um, I, in my mind, when I speak, uh, deficiencies are things that we need to improve or maintain. Something is not sufficient where it is. Remediation is a tree comes out and we have an obligation to step in and replace the replacement tree. So remediation is just talking about the trees. That when I speak of down. things, I speak of tree remediation. The rest of it is all, to me, deficiencies. Deficiencies. Okay, so... Then I then I'm understanding right now that there won't be any work done until 2024. It depends on what the work is. First priority, we'll make, take care of anything that's a drainage issue. When we've got problems with water that's causing damage or whatever, we're going to do everything we can to get that done. When we know how we are from the storm correction, where our monies are, probably after July. If we have money available, then we're going to go back and look at all of the things we've come up with, look at our priorities, where you've ranked things. That's why we're collecting this. It's a twofold collection. One is to predict what we need to spend and put aside in browning for next year, our predictions of what we would spend. The other is if we have money left over, we want to start doing the work that we can do this year. Okay. Any so. other questions for Cheryl? Okay, uh, and Nina, I just wanted to mention that, uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to send through the PDF uh, for the tracker, work order tracker, but I have the object, I have done, completed that now. And uh, so I'm gonna put it on the screen later in, and then we can just go through this and maybe just look at the money and kind of in response to your question there, Don, as to what we have available and how we move forward. But I think we get a better understanding once we see the tracker now, as I was able to update uh, everything yesterday. And you'll, prov you'll, you'll, you'll provide- No, it, I wasn't able to change it to PDF in time to send it. So I'm, I will, uh, I was working on so many other things when I got back. So, uh, but I, I was able to complete it. I can send it after this, but I thought since I have it now, we can talk about it and then actually look at the uh, allocations which we have in reserve and get a better feel for where we are. Okay. Um, so next, so uh, so no other questions for Cheryl on the, uh, and I think this will also refer to the zone walks and how we move forward and money, which we have a possible availability, you know, later. So once we re review the work order That's tracker. That's right. Hopefully we will have that money. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the next item is the homeowner comments. Is anybody who would, uh, who's on Zoom or Carol uh, who would like to address? Anyone on Zoom who would like to speak to the committee? Doesn't look like anybody, okay. So uh, in the, we got, um, let me just make sure I've got this right here, sorry. So we have the agenda back up there, please. Okay. And this, uh, the, uh, all the homeowners on Zoom can see this, all these documents? Okay. So uh, I've included the tree walk schedule that I got from uh, Paul. And just let's, can we take a look at that on the screen? Okay. So it's going to be every, monthly on uh, the last Mondays. So it's uh, starting, is that the 27th of March? If I got that right there? Okay, 27th of March, zone one. And I, so that will we'll start with you on the 27th of March. And then um, does that work for everybody? All the zone stewards, does that, yeah, you, yeah, get that in your calendar so uh, you can then join uh, Paul when he does his walk. 
Yes, tree walk on Mondays with Paul. Yeah, I, I understand. So is this um, trees, we're going to be looking at trees that are recommended by them? Or we're going to be pointing out trees? Or what's the purpose? I am going to ask Paul right now to now to talk about that. Yes. So you can take that mic there. Yeah. Hi there. Okay, so the purpose of the tree walks, we're going to identify trees uh, throughout the zones. And um, I, I will rely on some zone stewards and that may have a better um, connection with the trees in their zone to point out maybe stuff that they've noticed day to day. Um, but the majority of the trees that we'll be focusing on will be trees that I'll identify for, for the work. And we will discuss that work in the field and why we would be looking at the trees and what we're looking at and the work that we were, will be proposing. Is there any questions you had for Paul? Yeah, I, I have a question. Uh, at one point in time, you know, that problem tree that's on um, Commons Drive that the city denied us to be taken down. Mm -hmm. um, are we going back and asking the city? It's been about six months. I didn't know if we were going to revisit that or not. So I was just asking. The uh, Redwood down near the roundabout. Correct. Um, yeah, if that, that we are, we were just waiting that six month period and we can um, again reapply for that, that tree's uh, removal. Um, so you uh, we're at a good time because we have now the Grove report. So can you tell us what's uh, going on, what's happening? Yeah, well, um, trees in Nepenthe did well with this last wind event. We were very fortunate. We had very, very minimal uh, tree issues with the last uh, wind that came through earlier in the week. Um, that storm did delay our ability to get a crane out to do the restoration work on the redwood trees in the Vanderbilt area. So that is gonna be rescheduled for next Thursday. So we will have a crane in the area next Thursday um, doing the restoration work on the two redwood tops that failed um, back in the January event. Um, crews were out working today. Um, we'll be back out tomorrow again working on uh, some of the cedars also that we proposed to work on uh, that were damaged during the January storm event. So they're going to be doing that restoration work. Uh, the zone pruning, our, our annual pruning, where we are pulling out deadwood, your clearance issues, um, that's going to commence starting next week. So we're going to have crews starting zone one um, Tuesday through Friday, and we'll continue to work um, we're going to be putting in roughly eight to 10 days a month to get through um, this work. Uh, so we will be expecting to see the tree crews um, in the community. Um, and if there's any, if anybody has any questions on, on the trees or um, if there's anything that comes up while the crews are on site, they are directed to uh, take any of the questions to me or back to the office directly, um, and I would encourage homeowners to do the same. Christina, um, there were a couple of homeowners that had their hands raised that I think have questions for Paul. I don't know if he wanted to. Uh, who are the homeowners? I can't. I don't see this. So can uh, you can we, can you show us? Uh... Who would like to ask questions of Paul that might be on? Okay, Zoom? but we have. Can we have every? There were two hands raised a minute ago. Yeah. So. Who would like to ask a particular question to Paul Dubois? Can we scroll down? They must. I think there are a few more people on this uh, Zoom uh, call. So we got Don. Oh. Don, do you you don't want to talk, do you? No. Okay. And Lynn Goldsmith. Lynn Goldsmith. Like. Yes. Lynn, are you yeah, there? The reason the reason I took <clears throat> the reason I lowered my hand is because I saw your list. Because I was going to ask when are you going to do Zone Two, and the answer is on that chart. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, in the meantime, Paul, you've inspected certain trees around here, the redwoods, the cedars, you've done a, a check on, you've done a walkthrough, how's that, what's happening there? Yes, so we've, um, you know, per the requests that have come in since all the storm events, we've been um, going through the different requests that come in to evaluate certain trees. We have provided some proposals uh, for mitigation work on 
certain trees. Um, others will continue to monitor uh, as, as some uh, know our, our procedure is if the trees do not need any work or require any work, we're not going to propose any unnecessary work to the trees. So we are only proposing work to trees where it is needed and necessary. Um, I can did, you just can you just mention uh, when you say proposals, you submitted proposals for tree work? Correct. We we have submitted some proposals to Betsy um, for certain trees that we found have need of some immediate remediation. Right, and that's on the work orders. Yeah, the board approved that work. I want to say in February. And, Correct. And oh, those that yeah. ones. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. So we have fine. some of that yeah. work is okay. The yeah. crews were actively taking part um, okay. today and tomorrow. Um, we did have again a crane that was scheduled that was supposed to take part yes. on Tuesday. Yes. Again, we had some really high winds. Um, we weren't able to get the crane service on site. Um, so that was rescheduled for next Thursday. So we do have a few other proposals in the work that we are going to be sending over to Betsy um, on some other trees we identified. Um, the majority of the trees we are going to add on to our tree walks. So um, whatever hasn't been identified or addressed um, in this past February, March, we will address during the tree walks. And um, I did just submit a report for the tree failures that happened um, on, in the January event. I apologize, it was a little bit later than I was anticipating getting it out, but um, hopefully that can be something that you all have access to review. Um, some of the, the findings on uh, the trees that failed during that big storm event. Okay, so, so once we get that uh, it's forwarded to us, we'll, we'll do that. Um, I just want to look at uh, something like, for instance, oh, this has been closed. Uh, I just look, let me refer back to the minutes then from last month's minutes. Um, you mentioned so annual pruning is scheduled. So we're saying that's starting on March 20th. The crane is going to be in on March 23rd for the two broken redwoods at 1149. Uh, stump remove the stump removals have all been actually done, right? Because, but it's now Carson who has to do the uh, grading and the irrigation checks on that on the stumps, right? All the removal. No, I, I still need yeah. Uh, the uh, stumps are going to probably finish uh, by next week. Okay, great. Uh, so the, there there are still some stumps in the ground, or have they all been removed? Um. Stand up. All the stone, all the stone has been grinded, so we need to remove the grinds out of them on some of them. Okay, uh, and then uh, also you mentioned last month that uh, you have several trees to assess for restoration work, and you'll have a report and proposal for that. Is that the one you're referring to? Yeah, I have a re I have a report for the tree failures, and we've already given proposals for our trees that we need the remediation work done. So yeah. if I understand correctly, the remediation to those trees or restoration work that was needed, you already proposed that because it was kind of urgent. Correct. But the report part of it is what we're getting now. To Correct. Kind of, kind of circle back, say this is what happened. This was the work that was recommended and has right. been completed. But I'm just okay. referring back to the point that uh, Paul mentioned, that you have several trees to assess for restoration work, and you'll have a report and proposal for that by next Friday. So that is that something separate? What to what is so, where's so the we, report, in other words. we submitted the um the findings and into a proposal for the work for the trees that needed immediate work for that had hazards that were needed to be and is that being approved by the board yeah that's the one that's already been done that 11 thousand eight fifty. right okay right so that's been done yeah but this is more on the remaining trees and their remaining. Condition. So this is the remaining trees. So yes. Yeah, so the, re yeah. the report that I just submitted yeah. was on the trees that failed, the cause of the failures. The okay. The, so we we'll get a better. So we we'll get a better feel when we when Correct. everyone sees that report. Correct. Okay. So that's been done. In other words. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. That's good. Uh, any questions for Paul? One more question here. Uh, the spraying of uh, things like the uh, liquid ambers and the plums and stuff with all the weather we've had, what's the status on uh, that spraying? On the spraying of the plums, it has been done. 
on the liquid umbers, we like seven to 10 days away from them uh, to be spray until they start opening. I think I understood. Say, can you we're, say that again? We're about seven to 10 days out from when um, the, the conditions are, are oh, okay. right for the for to the spray, the, yeah, to for apply the spray. that. So we're going to wait, let's say, another ten days for for that to start. Then, yeah, we're freeze. we're we're approaching that window for that application to happen. Okay, okay, um, okay. So I ask, uh, hello, uh, who's it, who's on? Yes, it's Lynn. It is Lynn. I put my hand up again. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, can I ask for clarification, please? It, yes. The report. I'm guessing it was from Coast, the person speaking. I'm sorry, I'm I sort of missed that. No, yes, yeah, not Coast, it's Grove. Grove. I mean Grove. Speaking. I mean Grove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I am extremely concerned about a tree, and I believe it's a cedar. Betsy, I believe, told me it was a cedar, or thinks it's a cedar that's in front of this unit, and it is it 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 blows in the wind so when the wind is really, really strong, it blows so much that I don't sleep in my room. Um, and so I asked that it be inspected. And I even sent a picture of it because it had water going all the way up the trunk. Um, and so I just would, if they have already done their zone walks that really identified trees that re need remediation, then I'd like to know if that tree made it on the list. So the, the zone walk schedule is, is posted and we're gonna be walking those zones and identifying trees that need the remediation at that time. So we went through the community and evaluated the trees that needed immediate work, trees that were in oh, okay. risk of failure, trees that had active failure occurring or had significant damage that needed to be addressed. So we, okay. we've already submitted that. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of folks that are a little concerned or a little anxious about the large trees. Um, I, I'm very confident that uh, trees in, in the community are very safe. We do a lot of work on these trees and we, we are very active in, in identifying uh, tree hazards and removing them to the best of our ability. Um, like I said, the, what we experienced in January was, you know, was pretty unique. Um, and unique, but it'll happen again. <laughs> that, that is nature. Um, oh yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, so Well, I will say this, that lots of branches fell. And when you see that tree, that particular tree, blow in the wind, um, and the trunk is going back and forth, it's not a good feeling. Okay. I um, can understand. Uh, I'm going to look for you guys when you're out here walking. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> um, so if I can just make, understand uh, the, the report that you, that you brought, have submitted now, You've actually gone through uh, the whole area and sort of checked to see how what the, the trees that were uh, in uh, needed help or what? How how did you determine this? Because if I'm looking, listening to what Lynn Goldsmith is saying, is is that tree was that also looked at? I mean, do you know or how do you how did you inspect the trees? So if there's a request that comes in through the through the office, they send that request to me for an assessment. I will go out and I will assess the tree. If there is no work needed on that, I am not going to complete a report for that tree. If there is work needed on that tree, I will complete a report, send my inspection notes to the office for um, a proposal request to be generated at that point. Okay, so uh, so in other words, work orders, the work orders are generated and then Paul will go out and inspect Betsy. Is that how it works? It often is, but then sometimes um, I do not. And instead I will send it to him and say, wait till the tree, till your tree walk. And then we can assess this when we're at the tree walk. And I believe that's what I told Lynn Goldsmith because it's so close to the time when he's going to be in that area that it's probably better and she can hear it directly from him when they're in front of
and perhaps. do we do this because we have an annual pruning uh, uh, agreement with Grove, and so we have we determined that certain periods that they have to do this, or can they actually just go out and they do? Is that part of the agreement? No, I would say it's more the fact that we have the pruning for the hazards, and we have a long history with the growing as a courtesy, since Paul is often here. He will look at a tree if a homeowner is concerned about it. Um, and as he said, if, it, if it's okay, he's not going to write a report. But there's only one time a year when he uses his expertise to actually write the report okay. and make specific recommendations and, um, and then whatever the cost okay. of. Okay. And as, I guess this is in your zone, uh, Diane. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I have a question. The spraying of liquid ambers, um, there are several liquid ambers on Swarthmore where the cars are always parked there. And in the past, the spraying, eh, we don't really know if we can do it because the cars are underneath. Is that still true? Or, or is there a way to put notes on the cars saying, please? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, the, the tricky part with the spraying um, of the liquid ambers, it, 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 it's, all, it's all a timing issue. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain window that we have when the tree starts to push out its buds where we can apply that, that particular um, chemical to the tree. It's a growth, <clears throat> it's a growth regulator and it, it, you know, helps to reduce that tree's fruit production. Now, a lot of the times we can use, we use the bucket trucks to spray the upper canopy of the trees and we don't want to spray and get this chemical anywhere but where where it belongs which is on the tree so if there is a car that's parked in the way we tend to have to avoid that until yeah, that car we moves. have the authority to tell people they can't park there it would require a whole city process to do that unfortunately it would be different if it were on one of our private streets okay um, so in, with this particular homeowner, though, on Swarthmore, which is zone two, right, mm -hmm. the, that uh, walk is going to happen in April. on the 24th of April. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now in 16th of March. So um, and, that's and, six weeks away. And I'm familiar with, with the, the tree. trees okay. in, out, outside the area. I have looked at the trees on two different requests from the office to inspect those trees. Yes. I, again, I can very much appreciate the concern that everyone has with the big trees. They're big trees. There's not the, the, the size of the trees is, is the way they grow. And, and we do our very best to have different layers of, you know, inspecting these trees, whether it's myself doing drive throughs the community after storm events. Um, I've been in Nepenthe a lot since January, um, going and looking at a lot of different trees. Um, I'm also out on site with the crews. When the crews are on site, they're also directed to be not only focused on the work that they're doing, but while they're in the area to look around and identify any other hazards that may, that they see when they're on site. So they're going to report back to me. Okay. So, so uh, Lynn, I guess has, should feel reassured that you kind of have been there, you've checked it out and then we will have a better, we'll get an actual report on the. Yeah. And, the, and, and we so, walk, we yeah. walk these zones every year. We've, uh, we've done, We've done this since 2016. Um, so each zone gets walked um, e each year uh, in depth. So we, we've dressed uh, an, a lot of the trees in the, in the community um, since 2016 with, with the way that we've kind of layered it with the uh, annual pruning that we do and then the zone walks. And then, like I said, where I'm, I am on site after any rain or storm event, um, checking trees as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Jim, you have a question? Oh, Jim, 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 oh. Jim has a question. Go ahead, Jim. I'd like to circle back to this. Um, use the mic. Can you use the mic, please? I'd like to circle. You've got to get pretty close to you. Can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. I'd like to circle back to the uh, the the spring process for liquid amber. I understand from, from Betsy that a formal notice with cones and all the other stuff to prohibit parking is, uh, is something we couldn't do, but is there any way to put a email blast out 
to homeowners saying, look, uh, to minimize any issues related to overspray with the liquid embers, please be aware that we will be working in and then the area that is identified. So at least there's some transparency and some notice. That way, it would seem to me that Paul would have a better shot at being more efficient with this procedure rather than a I think that's a good a idea. Redo. Yeah. Or we maybe we mm -hmm. can even bootleg a couple of little yeah. penty cones and put them out and say, notice, did you know that this is well, going to be? We can actually do that. So because you would know when it, when the uh, spraying is going to be done. So we would have a few days notice and we yeah, could just we, send out to a certain. Have, we would have probably yeah. have about 48 hours, 72 hour notice yeah. before we, that's perfect. So, we get out yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and I believe we do have a map of all the liquid ambers um, of all the we've mapped out where what trees that we 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 apply that that to so i think yeah that'll be good so we can coordinate that with the office uh, to get the uh the actual date when the uh spring is going to happen and then we can actually just target that particular area with the it, e-blast it, it usually we usually do we usually have a two or three day window to to do that because we can't get all all the trees in one day so do you have a path or a pattern uh, so that we could say and when we do a blast if we do that that in this area will be on this day in this area this day are you going to or do you try to hit every liquid amber in here on the same one or two well, days in the past we've tried that and then as we've been talking about there are vehicle issues or other things so you know it tends we try to stick to that and then we have obstacles so if, then it ends up being to you know the advantage of the trees that we can we can get when the guys are on site. Well, we can just start with so. this and see how it works, and then once before the spraying happens, yeah. and then. I mean, if see. if I I think what would be helpful maybe as a companion to the email blast, if we you know put out a map of the where the liquid ambers are on yeah, site, that's what that would do. Yeah, give everybody a general idea yeah. of the areas to avoid. Yeah, we would have to do that in any case, and so get that. We have that map of the liquid ambers. We may have map. that. Maybe an internal could, map. Could, perhaps you could uh, forward that. To, that would be great. Yeah. To have. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so let's move on to the Carson report. Uh, Oscar? Christina? Excuse oh, me. I've had my hand up. Who is that? I'm Barbara, I'm Barbara Beto. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm kind of like Lynn, except not only will I not stay in the bedroom, I won't stay in the house. I spent about three weeks in January at my friend's house in Roseville, and that's where I am right now, just because of the last storm. And I did turn in a request to the office, and I, I got it I back. Do, yeah, I do know this. Is it, you're at 705 Elmhurst? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, I have been notified by that for, by Betsy and the offices, and uh, I believe uh, you have actually gone to inspect the tree. You've actually spoken, and so I can hired, you give us... I hired a consulting arborist. To inspect she had, the tree. She hired an and I submitted I submitted the report to the office that was done. It did recommend a little printing, but what I'm asking for is is there just good all I got was a note that said complete. And um it, would there be any communication with the homeowner? Because I have two big trees out there. They do kind of scare me. But from this chart, it looks like nothing will happen until the end of okay, July. Okay, so we've got Paul Dubois here right now. So let's hear what he has to say about this. Thanks, yeah, Paul. So hi Barbara. Um, Hi. So, so we, we, you know, we, we've looked at the trees um, again, and I, I did read the report that your um, mm -hmm. consulting arborist provided. Um, I, I'm, you know, in, I agree with, with what she found with the trees okay. and, you know, in, in general, I mean, that's the, this, this particular consulting arborist, you know, would recommend basically what what I'm going to recommend for the trees and okay. you know it's when we go and we look at the, the trees on these zone walks we are specifically looking for um, canopy weight canopy height and branch connection and how we can um, alleviate some of the causation of tree failure which would be canopy height canopy weight uh, branch attachment. So those are the things that we look for when we're doing these zone walks and we identify in the trees that um, need that particular work done. And so that's going to be something that we're really going to focus on. Um, we've been successful in the past. We've done a lot of 
work on the liquid ambers for canopy reduction, weight reduction, branch elongation, or we've reduced the size and, you know, it's a past, cedar, cedar. Correct. I'm, I'm just, I'm yeah. just explaining oh, okay. with the okay. process that yeah. we've used in the past on liquid ambers. It, we have had no tree failure on liquid amber since since uh, taking that approach. So we're so gonna, can I yeah. can I just jump in here? So this tree, particular tree at seven oh five, the cedar. There's actually two. two there's cedars. two of them. Yeah. Two of them. You've inspected both of them, and as far as you you're concerned, the trees are sound. Uh, they've been they've been pruned. We we have we have no. pruned the cedar trees at seven oh five um, regularly since 2016. We have at least uh, two different reports over the years of where we've taken significant weight um, from the previous homeowner there uh, requested uh, pruning on those trees. So we've we've worked on those trees. We're familiar with those trees. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we've got a, uh, so it work has been done and they are sound. Uh, so yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just to, um, question to Paul. Uh, yes, I go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, Linda Cook and I are zone stewards for zone one. We're 10, 11 days out from the walk. Is there anything that we could or should see in advance of the walk? Anything in writing? So, um, you know, what I encourage folks to do, um, you know, you have day-to-day -day experience with the trees. So you're going to see um, tree differences that I may not notice because you're living with them. They're, they're right outside your front door. So there may be subtle changes that you might notice that I might not notice. So those are the things that I appreciate when we're on the walks, um, sharing that information with me, because as as the seasons go go through, there are different different um, growth cycles and different things that are going on around the trees that are are good information to know uh, how to take care of them. So um, you know some seasonal things that we always want to keep an eye out for, especially getting into spring. Um, any sort of fungal growth, any mushrooming, um, that kind of stuff around the base of trees or on trees, that, that stuff we're very interested in. Um, that's usually a spring and fall kind of thing that we're looking for. Um, I, I'm looking for any, any you know, cracks or fissures or anything that, that looks new around the base of the tree or on the tree itself. I mean, these are things that um, certain times a year uh, will be more noticeable than others. You know, after, during rain events, when we have ground saturation and uh, we can see a little bit better around the, the root flare of the tree and we're getting wind, we, you know, we can look and see if there's any mounding or um, bulging going on around uh, the base of some of these trees. So th those are, those are all good identifiers that everybody can look for. And again, if there's something that you feel um, has changed or, or you're interested in, uh, I, you know, I encourage just to call in the office and we'll come out and we'll take a look and see if there's something there that we need to address. Okay. I think you will get a better idea once we do, do this. Once we do the tree walk with uh, Paul, I think we'll get a lot of good education on what to look for. For sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Paul. So thank you. Um, we need to Carson report, please. Oscar, thank you very much. If you could give us an update. Sure. Uh, last week of uh, March, um, we will be like March 28. Uh, that's when we're going to have scheduled the INF spray. Sorry, say, say it again. The INF spray. Okay. As, is it on when? So the last week of March. When is it? Insect and fungus. In spray. Yeah. Yes, yeah, insect and that. fungus. I understand, understand, but what date did you say? Last week of March. It will be like the 28th. 28. Okay. Okay. And as I mentioned about the liquid umbers, so it's going to be like seven to 10 days. The and what? The what? Which one? The liquid umbers oh, for liquid prevention. Umbers. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I'm talking too fast. <laughs> Not speaking loud my ears. <laughs> and the deep roof feeding uh, is going to be scheduled in April, so it's coming up. So when end of April, beginning, middle? On April, Sometime deep roof feeding? April sometime or you don't know how usually it's going to be like first week of okay April. thanks and at this particular time i think we still not need the water so the water is off <laughs> obviously uh this week uh, we didn't do no mowing at all uh, we tried to avoid any damage on the uh, turf areas 
We'll see how it's going to be next week because it looks like it's going to keep raining according to the weather. Uh, irrigation checks, we still on zone one. We haven't done much due to the rain. And the renovation, as I mentioned, we're like a half a week, uh, well, yeah, like a week away. So basically next week we will finish the remediation of the stump removals. Uh, we also finished the drain at uh, 1581 University. And I emailed you guys about the um, 110 Dumberton, uh, where we cannot really do a drain because we will damage big uh, roots from those trees. So Paul also was there uh, looking at those uh, trees because I usually contact him if I need an advice how big of the roots we can get away so to avoid any of uh, damage either on the tree or any other event and uh, I believe uh, that's it for right now any oh, I did the uh, walk uh, on zone 2 so I finished walking all those areas on the report um, any questions for Oscar? Go ahead. What's the timing expected for um, new planting in the areas where the trees went down in the January and December storms? Okay, can I just, uh, uh, I guess Cheryl should address that one. At this point, the plan is that the board will make a tour of all of the sites and make a decision about where we should plant. And from that, we will come back and ask for proposals when we know we've got the money to do it. So, so it sounds like the board tour of those sites won't happen until there might be money available. No, we'll do the tour site soon when everything is ready, when Carson has finished with their leveling and their rest of it so we can really look at the area. Then we'll go through and look at the, where the sites have been. Should we plant another tree? Should we not? And make those decisions. Eventually, it will come back through this committee, but we won't be doing work automatically. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Uh, we, you can keep that one now. Um, that's yours. Uh, Oh, yeah, actually, um, the how berm detail is in progress in zones one to three. Has that been completed? Um, Mike, <laughs> sorry. I will say most of them, uh, I probably one quarter of uh, zone three has not been done, but most of them uh, has been accomplished. So zones one and two have been done, but zones three is still in progress? Correct. Okay. Uh, then you talk about the the berm of how, right? So that's how on berm. zone one the how and, berm and three. How berm to one to three, yeah. One, two, and three. No, it's one and three. One and three. Okay, okay. So because I had it done as one, two, two, three. Okay, so one has been completed, three is still in progress. Uh, then the staking of trees and shrubs in progress or completed? In progress. We still have progress. some of the uh, okay. when kind of. Uh, irrigation checks are still in progress. You're still, you're on zone one, so you still have all zones two to seven still to go. Correct. Okay. Uh, Merit injector side was done in January. Uh, landscape, okay. Drainage, uh, liquid amber, and what? And the watering now that's been turned off during the the rain, or how's? Yeah, the water's been off. Off, and so once uh, the ground gets drier, then you'll turn. Okay. Um, and the fertilizer with barricade for turf. That has been done. Been done. Okay. I think that's. It, unless there's anybody else has questions. Yes, Diane. Is the uh, irrigation, the watering off in all the zones now for a couple of weeks? All the zones. Okay, so if we're seeing puddles. It's that, either from the rain or, or could be a mainline break, but a, it will not be just a puddle. It will be water running through. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'm going to send a note 
I'll, I'll send a thing because there is there is a like three homes that there's definite not rain there's water okay so there could be a leak somewhere then okay so uh you just said 1581 university has been done the the drainage correct it's completed okay okay great uh, so if there's no further questions for oscar um oh uh one question the tree work proposal for 11,850 has that is still open so you're still that's the one that you're still working on right the stump so uh, that's still working on there so we stay another week okay excellent great thank you so um, let's review the zone, because since Oscar has also looked at this, can we bring up the zone two walk notes, please? And I'm just bringing this up here right now, because I think moving forward, we have to figure out when we do our zone walks, and I think uh, zone four, we are doing a walk tomorrow. So how we want to move ahead with, are we, aren't we doing, is it not zone, are we, where the hell are we? 4B, yes, 4B is, yeah, it is tomorrow. Oh, on my calendar, yes, yes, it is. Let me see. 17th of March. Uh, 17th of March is what we have down here for zone 4B. Wow. Huh? That's tomorrow. Yes, yes. Um, so since uh, Betsy has been doing the zone notes, I'm just trying to... We have to come up with some sort of a format as to how we want to move forward when you do the zone walks now. And um, oh, where is she? Is it? It's once we see it on here, we'll uh, get an idea. Go ahead. I have a question about um, the zone walks. Uh, the last one we did, the I haven't seen the report on that. Which one is that? Zone four. Zone four walk. I, yeah, there I think that, oh, we, I don't think we did a report because I believe that was going to be for the IBP project and uh, that was the reason why. And I think nothing was referred, it was nothing was pointed out, I suppose, for remediation. Yeah. Okay, but we did make some comments about a couple of things and I, I, apparently they got lost, so I'll remember them tomorrow. Okay, because I was not present at that walk and neither was Cheryl, so I'm not sure. Um, it's always good. I guess that's why I think we have to have a procedure now as to how we move forward with this. Uh, perhaps the zone stewards do a walk. They do uh, know uh, what uh, problem is being raised. So maybe uh, after the walk, sending us or sending me uh, the and Cheryl, I guess, and or I can just forward it in the office your notes. But uh, let's see what. What happens here? Yeah, so that I think so that would be good. And I think let's see what she does here. I'm not I can't be as sophisticated as that. I think it doesn't need to be, but uh, <laughs> or detailed. Up to you. Wait, you want to meet nine o'clock uh, tomorrow? Where? Um, we're still waiting for, but. Yeah, I know, but we need, to, I'd just like to get the zone stewards to be doing that because they have a better feel. Um, yes. While we're waiting for Betsy, um, I wanted to ask just a general question, but it also would relate to Paul's comments. Um, he listed a series of symptoms when we have a tree in distress or yes. potential failure, something that's problematic. Is that something that we could let folks know who have are concerned or are interested about the trees in their immediate area so that they can feel some comfort that if they don't yeah. see any of these symptoms, uh, maybe that's a good sleep at night so someone doesn't have to spend well, time in Roseville. I know we slept down on the first floor for two weeks. So she's she's not alone. Okay, but we do have the report comes in as a detailed report, and that can obviously be sent out. Or it, I mean, zone stewards will have copies of that, and then you can. Well, I'm just thinking to the general public, a, a just an article in the newsletter yeah, saying I mean, if you're looking sure. for. Yeah, and I think we we can so or we can put it on the website as well. Yeah. You know, the Nepenthe Maybe website. All, but the yeah. idea of a quick list that yeah. Paul 
yeah. shut out what I think could be a real yeah um, sure. pacifier for a lot of folks yeah. who don't really know what they're yeah living next to. Yeah, we we'll, we can certainly look into that, and I, I think that's what we've been doing as well with with the zone with the tree walk. So always publishing it. So, and that I think the easiest would be putting it on the website. Is Betsy uh, gone for the day? It's, it's over. Where's Betsy? Trying, trying to find. She's trying to find the walk zone two walk notes to put up up on the whiteboard. Five hundred Dunbarton tomorrow, right there at that grassy knoll area. Five hundred Dunbarton, Oscar. Okay. Yes. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock sounds lovely. Um. Um, okay, so any other zone steward comments <laughs> while we're waiting for this, apart from anyone, uh, you've made yours and that was good. Any zone steward comments? Um, no, nothing. Okay. Um, good grief. So maybe. Uh, if just a comment, um, we success yeah so we have it so okay so how about we jump to then the work order tracker if you like and then we can if it's if you got and then we can then go back and then we can go back to the uh, oh okay let me see. okay so i think we should um yeah let's get the whole it's it, it'll cut off from there mm. okay so i'm just let's put the summary up there okay the summary is we've got the summary here and now just bear with me i just want to just check and i've also got this okay so you can see on the summary that I just I just updated this yesterday. So and got all the invoices, and you can see on landscaping that we have spent one hundred and ninety seven thousand one hundred and eighteen one hundred ninety seven thousand just over nine hundred ninety seven thousand uh, on landscaping. Now, if you refer to the reserve study and the allocations we have. In landscaping, our allocation was 165,401. Oh, where is it gone? Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, right. Okay, so I need to go. So you can see that we have actually exceeded in the landscaping side already at the end of March. Uh, we are exceeded over 30,000 on there. Um, then we go into irrigation, and irrigation shows 9,630. And on the allocation for in the reserve, our allocation is what 102,500. So, which means we've got a balance of what 92,000 there in irrigation. So, that's good news. Um, you know, then we have trees. Uh, trees, we've spent already 253,000, over, just over 253,000. And the allocation for trees is 298,000. So we have, ex we've got in balance about 45,000, let's say, on trees. So that's just to give you a general feeling for how we're moving forward. But the good news is that we have, uh, for the IBP project, we had budgeted, we have an allocation, should I say, of $721,395. So we've got that amount to in, 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 in reserve there. So if you move uh, into- Hang on a second. Yeah. 
Um, Go ahead. You had yeah. for the irrigation 795,000, right? Say, say again? You had a, what was your number for irrigation? That irrigation we had? for the IBP project? Yes. Yes, that was um, 721,395. Okay. And that was for IBP. Okay, and so we had that number and we're pushing that off till next year, correct? Correct. But we're yep. not spending that money? That, well, that's what I'm going to get to now. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to get to that because that is our allocation. So that's exactly. So let me get to it. So now if we can get the sheet up for uh, landscape, please. Okay. So you can see it's starting. This, these are all from that all the payments that were work that was done in 2022 initially. And then as you scroll down, you'll see it's 2023. And if you can scroll, continue scrolling. And then, um, the highlighted area, which says uh, 17 stumps, uh, this in pink, that means the work is still in progress, but I've put it into the uh, tracker, uh, the amount, so it's taken off. Uh, we've got the credit in there, and then it also says 1581 University, the one Oscar just mentioned, that's been done, and that's in there. So you will see that the balance there is 197.118. Uh, so, and this is also still uh, the stumps. I've included that in there and the drainage. Um, then if you move down to the next, yeah, for the irrigation, it's again, 9,630. And move down then, continue downwards. So then we've got the trees. Again, work started in 2022, going down, move down, please. Then again, uh, there is the restoration work that we were just talking about, 11,850, the specialty prune, uh, 2,700. And those are items that haven't been invoiced as yet and haven't been paid, but I've put it into the tracker. And that gives us this total of 253,285. So, um, we now have basically what you've been saying the, about the IBP. So we have that big amount there on the side. Now, what we have to see is what is the figure, what is the invoice, uh, the proposal going to be for the 17 stumps and the remediation in that area? Is it going to be 150,000, 250,000, 350,000? We don't know. We will be able to find out. But this is a good amount. And it's, uh, I have a feeling that I think we will have some money available, uh, looks like it, because if you got 781,000 in the pot, but we do have, we have um, exceeded the, uh, our landscape allocation, um, but we still have this huge amount. So I think we might be doing good. We might be able to do some remediation, landscape remediation work in 2023. It's possible uh, based on what, we, what happens. So, I mean, that's the good news there. Uh, right next to you, in front of you. Yeah. Lost it. Um, we'll have a new board in July. So that new board is June, going to be yeah. in, in June, starting effective July. And they will be making decisions. So that I don't want, and this board is not going to commit to you where we're going to spend money exactly when the new board is here. We're electing three positions. So that's going to change what the board may want to do. So what we can say is we will look at the money. If we have money and we know we've got money before July and we have work that needs to be done, that's okay. But we're not going to commit to that until we know what money we have and what the next board wishes to do. Christina? Yes. You'll be sending all of this information yes, out. Yes, I, I will send out... Um, all the pages that you've shown here. I, the, I've got it in PDF now. I've put it into PDF and I will send it out to the committee so you can all have a look at it and spend a nice evening. Okay. Another comment for the group. Uh, we've got $750,000 that's not going to be spent this year that was in the budget. Hang on. So starting over again. Sorry, I didn't hear that. We have $752,000 that's not being spent this year that was in this year's budget. And so we have some flexibility in our planning and work, but uh, a question comes up is, uh, what will the board do in 2024? Because now it's gonna look for $750,000 for irrigation. Well, this is the, the money that we have for 752 is how we can speak and spend it in 20 if, if we would have to be spending this in 2023 because we have to pay this huge amount for this turf for the uh, landscape remediation for the 17 uh, sites. 
And then if we have money extra, then I think we should be start doing some, you know, extra the work. But somehow we have to come up with that same amount of money or something for that same project next year. Well, yes, correct. Yeah. Well, I just, it's, well, a, it's a caution. What will the board do with regard to the budget and planning for 2024? I think that the issue is identifying what needs to be spent next year. The bud budget will be developed by the board. They will look at what's available and make those decisions. It's not for this committee to worry about that part. It's for the board to look at one money, what money we have, what resources, and allocate it. If we need to truncate something, if we need to adjust, the board will be doing that and looking at the monies. The board together with the finance committee works on that. So Don, but but for all, we, as far as we're concerned, we have this nice, we have still have money in uh, grounds for 2023. Yes, Jim. Talking about uh, monies available for work, uh, the insurance monies that are going to be paid to the HOA, how well they possibly impact the issues we're talking about here. They've already got the credit insurance. It's already they been finalized. The amounts have been finalized. They've already, I've already entered it in here. Credit uh, insurance. The remains. money that was for landscaping, landscaping yes. Other things in parts of claims are still being processed and will be paid out. But the landscaping, we have received the money. This, and it's already shown in here with the, the remittance. Any other questions? Okay, so do we have our zone two walk notes, those we've been waiting for? Brilliant. Yes. Well, there we go. This is a very, very sort of uh, sophisticated way of doing this. I'm not sure how we how we want to do moving forward, but I think the picture. Can, uh, is any is, is there an issue? Do we have a problem? Uh, I deliberately said no to that. I suppose where is the camera? Does Peter want to see me, is it? I can't, I have to pro, uh, position myself elsewhere. Right now he has uh, you in the picture, Rick. So next time I'll sit, yes, I'll sit over there then. Um, unless we get a better camera system. But anyway, um, 1006 Vanderbilt. Uh, so we're starting with that and so are there any questions on there, Diane? Uh, you've looked at this, and uh, Jim. Um, I think it's a wonderful format. Yes, I think it's, yeah. it's excellent. And are you going it's, to follow that format? Yes, it's uh, it's concise. It shows exactly what we were looking at, and I think it's it's great. So yes, but what I my question is that how, moving forward, we don't have Betsy to do this uh, right now. So when we do zone walks, are you going to? Will you be able to? produce the same concise report? It's all on Word, isn't it? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and we can just do that. Yeah, great. Um, so we could try start that with zone four and see how that works. Yes, uh, so big. Uh, you need to put your alarm, you need to put not the alarm, but your mic so, <laughs> close to you. Um, yes. You know that I have a form that I share with you yes. guys, and I've been doing that for two, three years. Yes. I don't know. Is that something? It, I will be happy to do this if it's friendly, you know, user friendly. Is that, you know, is that what you would like to see Sun Stewards uh, do now? Well, yours is done on Word, and all you need to do is just maybe put an action item there because you you, you mention what what has to be done. And then you can just put here uh, next the address, and then you have that already in your yeah, form. Yeah, I'll be happy to. to oh, yeah, I, and then you, you just know. have to say what the is issue is and what the next action is, and that okay. just to, you just need to add another column okay. to your form mm -hmm. because your form is excellent, so it's really well done. Yeah, um, and then maybe if you want a picture, if you want to, but yeah, uh, so. and I think that would work. So all you need to do is just add another column. Okay, so yeah, Betsy, if you can or whoever. You yeah, know, it's just, really just, just drag and drop. Just yeah, drag and so and I will send it out. Yeah. yeah. It's word. That's yeah. word, yeah. So 
okay, it looks like word in any case. So, okay, so, um, so I just wanted to bring this up, not necessarily to look at every item here, but just to see that this is kind of how we need to move forward. Uh, I think the advantage of producing this after the walk is that during the walk, it's an opportunity for zone steward, chair, and board liaison to talk about things like this very top item, yeah. you know, and come to uh, some agreement or understanding that can then later be codified so that we have consistency amongst all seven zones. That's that's my thought. And if you scroll down, I mean, I'm just looking at some of these because if you're saying we have to identify landscape deficiencies and we have to go with the ranking plan, uh, how uh, then for the board, then so this is information so far. So if we, is there anything here where we picked up where we need to get some work done? So scroll. Uh, Claire is expectation. Oh, here's this. This is a good one. Uh, Oscar is expectation that twigs and other debris will be picked up each week on service day. Uh, no, uh, Mike because otherwise I'm going to get in trouble on Zoom. Yeah, those areas in particular with the uh, tulip trees, I mean, they uh, basically have a lot of uh, small droppings of the uh, branches. So it's unfortunate, but that happens. And yes, we are doing our best to uh, start picking all those ones up every week if we can. On this particular week as you guys know we had several big bigger branches than that that we tried to pick up throughout the whole complex so yes my crew probably didn't pick up those ones okay all right we, we are gonna okay. do that okay so that's a yes then um then i had another question here on this 1026 because we looked at that and then now you can see there's just a little area there that needs uh, some planting of ivy. So what does the board want us to do in that respect? Uh, is that... Um... No, but that's a tree remediation. That was from the damage from January. That tree was not... It was a tree loss. Yes. The, just so you know, that particular one, when that tree went down, we was be able to remove the stump at the same time. So that's why it's not on the other proposal on the map, but it's part of that. It's a plus one. I just think it needs to be documented if you already have the list of the stumps. So I talked to Ken, he is our tech, and I mentioned it to him about that area. So he has not been spraying. My crew has been only weeded in that area. So at the time that they, do, that they did the cleanup on the line trimming, they basically removed the roots out of that area. So that's why you don't see much of the growing of that uh, vinca minor. We're not using spray on it. Oh, well, I think the question is, what does the community prefer or what does the board prefer? Uh, right now, those boulders look like they're in an island of dirt, like there's a moat of dirt, and then there's a sea of vegetation. Uh, I would think that the correct way would be that the vegetation comes up and feeds the boulder. And we can do that. We can just let it let it be.
if you don't if you don't trim it, then you never see a boulder. Yeah. So that's that's good. This is that area that was replanted about five years ago. Yeah, and it's just so many different plants. So I. One was hard to understand. Um, is it overplanted or just not the plants that we think we want? Because it didn't look overplanted. It's in the photos, but if you were to go to 2241, you would see what we saw, which is there's like layers of plants and they're super jammed in there and not what any one of them is really getting fully seen. Right now, you do see the lower petal because it's got the purple flowers, but there's actually like another plant behind that one. So uh, you know, for many years, they probably looked really nice, but now you've got the like, species all crowded in together. Well, I think the cure would be until you have funds to address these areas that are for new. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jim was pointing out that it goes to the idea of talking about um, a policy of planting and how many species and how far apart. Yeah, he wasn't with us. So what's going on on the turf? It has a lot of the poor, poor grass in there, and some fescue. I mean, some Bermuda grass, and um, basically, uh, also the um, homeowner is being pulling out the poa from those areas. So that's why you can see some other gaps around. And uh, he basically said he didn't like it. So. So the only way to, uh, for that area to look better is just to renovate it. And as you guys know, I mean, poa grass, you're just gonna probably go back and regrow. So the re yes, I did. So the reason that Saracocus is like that, if you remember the uh, high winds did drop a tree on 2271, damaged that section of liquid amber and also drop into the poor shrub that is there. So that shrub still alive. I mean, I can prune it back and it can't regrow, but that's what happened to the shrub. Hang it on by a thread. Mike went out. Yes, I did look it over. Um, on that particular area, I mean, other than you have like a variety of species, uh, some of the uh, lyriops are not doing too well, but it just been more uh, crowding in because they start growing like a ground cover. So, and also you have the, um, you also have the uh, Campanula, I believe it's called, that is just also a ground cover. And, um, it, and it just basically too many species around it.
<laughs> and I don't know if yours is working. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> and I'm noticing I'm using the other slide involved, so I will remember that. Um, any other homework or comments uh, or any ask about it? Yeah. Okay, so meeting is adjourned. Oh, yeah, it's a